If you're a beginner drummer who's been going at this just long enough to realize you're stuck and maybe not growing as fast as you'd like, then I have something special for you today. If you're feeling stuck on basic grooves, you're not able to move beyond that, and you're getting stuck on complex portions of songs that you're just not able to master, and you're starting to feel like you're wasting your time on all of this, then you need to dive into the four-way coordination method I am sharing with you and breaking down for you today. This is how you gain command, control, and confidence over the kit and avoid freeze-ups and brain farts that cause those dumb mistakes that leave you feeling like a total amateur. You can overcome this. Let's get started. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. Glad you're hanging out today. I help beginner and intermediate drummers become the musicians that others want to play with and have in their band by teaching you the core fundamental drumming skills that get you results faster. There's a barrier that's been keeping you from growing as fast as you could. Any guesses as to what it is? Because there are definitely a lot of things out there that can be potential barriers, but there's a big one that I see in student after student. And by the way, as we get into talking about this, I have a special gift for you, a free PDF e-guide that is your resource for building coordination. It's in the description below. I'm gonna be telling you more about it and showing you what it's all about. It's gonna be your, your practical application of what we're talking about today. It's gonna help you a whole bunch. So the big barrier, the big barrier that's standing in your way, most drummers don't have a linear method for building coordination. Now, why is this important? Why do we care about coordination? Well, without four-way independence, drumming will always be hard. But with four-way independence, everything you play will be effortless. Think about that for a second, because this is the drumming truth we've got to all accept here. Otherwise, what's the motivation to practice coordination? Without four-way independence, so without a, a way to grow in that area, without a way to master that, drumming will always be hard, no matter what something is always going to be, there's always going to be a roadblock. There's always going to be something you get stuck on. But with that four-way independence, if you have the total coordination and you're growing in that area, then that means that you reach a level where everything you want to play, you can just play. You're capable of it. And that is really cool. That's why we have to build coordination. That is an essential skill as a drummer. So, okay, we know that we've got to build coordination, but the big problem is that most drummers know that. We know we need to build our independence but we don't actually have a method that's getting us there. We're having to think too much about, well, what should I practice next? What should I practice next? Well, I'm having trouble here, so how do I get my right foot independent from my right hand? Let's go look on YouTube. So we end up running into little problems and then looking for solutions to them, and that's gonna work eventually, but it's gonna take you a very long time because you don't have a method. You don't have a step-by-step -step method that has all the work laid out for you. That's what we're getting into today. We gotta solve this problem. Because ultimately your solution is having a well-rounded practice session where you are working on coordination, where you're not just working on hand technique, that's super important, but that needs to not be the only thing you practice. You're also not just practicing songs, because a lot of my students will use songs to build coordination, which is not a bad thing, because practicing songs will increase your comfort on the kit, but you still have to have some sort of coordination method, otherwise you're gonna keep running into trouble spots in songs. We wanna to get to where we can just play any song we want without worrying about it. And that's what this will do. So you've gotta have a coordination strategy in place. What's that strategy gonna be? Let's talk about this. I'm calling this the 30 days to four way rock coordination for the beginner drummer method because this is literally 30 steps. Whether or not it takes you 30 days, it might take you 60 days, it might take you a few months. That's not the point. The point is what you're learning in the process. Whether, whether you blast through this or whether it takes you a while, the point is here are the individual steps. And if you learn this step, then you can go to the next step and then the next step. And so you've only got to do one thing at a time. That's what's so cool about this. Learn one new coordination skill at a time, each day, every few days, however you want to pace this out, and you will build four-way rock coordination, even if you're starting as a total beginner. And that's what's really cool about this. This is the guide you can download in the description, totally free. Take it to your practice room, put it on your iPad, print it out, whatever you want to do. This solves that whole issue of having to go out and find coordination things to practice. This is your proactive approach because instead of reacting to the coordination problems that you're running into when you're practicing and realizing, oh, I can't play this song because my foot won't cooperate or, oh, I need to play this fill but I can't keep left foot timekeeping to make this work or I need to play this hi-hat open note but my left foot won't work. Instead of then having to react to those problems and then search on YouTube, how can I solve this? And hopefully you find something good 
Instead of having to take that whole approach, you have a proactive method here, where as you're working through this method, you're already solving these problems ahead of time. You're ironing them out so that you don't have to deal with the begin. And that's the cool thing here, that when you solve these coordination problems, when you're practicing these and you use these things, you apply them to music, you don't have to go back and worry about them again. Once you get your left foot coordinated, it's coordinated. Once you get your right foot playing on off beats, offsetting what your right hand is doing, done. You don't have to think about it again. You learn these things and they stick with you when you're applying them and you're using them in music. So this guide, the 30 day four way rock coordination for the beginner drummer has your work cut out for you because it lays it all out into 30 steps. It's a linear method, meaning each day there's just one thing to do, one thing to do. And then we might take one thing away and add something else the next day and then tweak one little thing the next day. We're gradually changing things and we're learning grooves. Instead of just learning exercises and drills and boring stuff that just makes you wanna smack your head against the wall and give up on playing the drums, instead we're doing grooves, things that are fun and that you can directly apply to songs because that's the key. Like I said, if you're going to learn these things and not forget them, then you have to be applying them to music. And the cool thing about building coordination by learning grooves is that you're also learning musicality. You're learning things that you're going to directly apply to your favorite songs, and that's what you're gonna find. As you work through this, a fun challenge is saying, all right, this is a cool groove. Now that I've learned it, where can I use this? What song can I think of that incorporates something just like this? You're gonna find songs. So let me break down for you a little bit how this system works. I'll show you some of what we end up doing in this guide, and I'll show you just some, some screen grabs of the guide here on the screen. But basically, the, you know, the, the big problem with coordination practice is just that it's not fun. When we're doing exercises and when we're doing drills and we're you know, sitting here playing this thing on the snare and we're doing this thing with our feet and maybe we're practicing it on a practice pad and we've got our practice set up, it just feels so monotonous. It feels like math because technically it is just math because we're figuring out to play certain notes and rhythms in time and we're trying to lock things together. That's just not fun. But if you can take music and take grooves and drum patterns that we actually use when we're playing songs and that actually sound good and practice those to build our coordination, then it's fun. And that's what's so cool about this guide. It makes it fun because you're practicing grooves that you can use in songs. Because if we're honest, that's all that we wanna do, right? You're probably here, hopefully watching, watching the non-glamorous drummer videos because you want to play songs. That's what I'm all about. I wanna help you get good at playing songs. I want you to be the musician other people want to have in their band because you're good at playing songs. So coordination is a means to an end. This is not the end all be all. This is a means to an end. We've gotta learn our hand techniques so that we can play fluidly, build our coordination so we can play whatever we want, listen well and train our ears so that we know what to play. And when you do those things, you get to where you can just play songs effortlessly and play and whatever you play sounds good because you've worked on those things. Those are all the means to the end, the end being playing songs really well, whether you're playing in your basement, whether you're jamming with buddies, whether you're recording, whether you're playing cover gigs, playing at your church, playing an original band, whatever that is, you can do that and you can get to that level by working on these things that are the means to an end so that you can nail songs. And coordination is such a big one. This is a huge one. You've gotta practice this. You've gotta master the coordination so that everything gets easier and you can think about the music and have more fun. Because that's the other thing. Not only, going back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago, about without four-way independence, everything is hard. And with it, everything is effortless. Well, with four-way independence, everything is more fun. If you want to have fun on the drums, build your independence. Because not only do things get easier, but suddenly you get to listen more and hear more of what's going on around you and just have fun jamming out and having a blast on the drums. That's what I want for you. So a little sneak peek of where we're going in this guide. By the way, if you are a total beginner and you have no idea how to read notation, don't worry because there are recordings here and drum notation is surprisingly easy. You're not having to learn you know, all these different notes on a staff and all the accidentals and the key signatures, all the crazy stuff that you have to learn with tonal instruments. We don't have to worry about that with drums, so it's a little bit simpler. And for the most part, we're just dealing with a kick line, a snare line, and a cymbal line. So for the most part, it's those three things, maybe some left foot that we'll put on the bottom of our staff, but we're mostly dealing with quarter notes and eighth notes, very simple rhythms. And when you listen to the recordings and then you look at what the notation looks like, it all makes sense. So even if you're totally new, even if you can't read notation, don't be afraid of this, grab the guide, you're gonna get the hang of it, and you can definitely learn a lot by ear, and the notation will make sense to you as you're following along. Guess what groove we start with? We just start with the basic, money beat. Any beginner can get this together. For most people, it only takes a few minutes, even if you've never played it before. 
You just want to get your eighth notes going with the right hand. One and two and three and four and add some kick on one and three. Snare on two and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And that's it. That is step one. That is day one. And if it takes you some time to get it together, if you're a total beginner, that's fine. Don't worry. Don't stress about it. Most folks can get that together pretty quickly, and you can be proud of yourself. Get yourself pat on the back because you are playing a drum beat that you can use in so many songs. That's why it's called the money beat. Most gigging drummers make the majority of their money playing that beat. Then from there, all we do is we start adding in little details. We're tweaking little things, taking out notes, adding notes. And so from there, all that we want to do, what we do on day two, is add the left foot closing on two and four with the snare. So that means our left foot plays with our left hand, which is not actually that hard. So technically, when you can get this going, you have all four limbs working and it's not as hard as you think. Because it's just the left side of your body working together. Nothing crazy there. And then after that, day three, we add in kick again with the snare. So then we have everything happening on beats two and four, which gives us a four on the floor groove because now our kick drum is playing quarter notes like this. So that, I just want to show you how simple and how achievable this is and how this is going to save you so much time because you're going to know exactly what to practice and you're going to see these milestones. You're going to see, hey, by day 10, I'm going to be able to do this. By day 20, I'm going to be able to do this. Wow, by day 30, I'll be able to do this. And when you stick with this, even if one of those steps takes you a few days, it's okay, don't worry about it. Don't put this on your calendar. This is flexible. This is loose. It's okay if, if you have to spend a few days on one of them. You'll be able to see where you're able to go with this, which is so motivating and you'll build coordination in less time because it's all laid out for you. So I hope you see how easy this is to start because that's all you gotta do to get started. You might be watching this and you're like, Steven, I can already do that. Awesome, good for you. That means the first few days, easy. You've already checked off those. That means you can go through this, quickly play through the first few days and then just pick up where it starts to challenge you because as we get going, we wanna start switching things up a little bit. And eventually we wanna move our right hand from the ride to the hi-hat. Now this is kind of interesting because if we're still closing the hi-hat on two and four, that means we've got to open it in order to close it, right? So if we're playing this, let's say we're doing the we will rock you groove, queen, the just basic rock groove like this. We're closing the hats on two and four. Let's say we move the right hand over to the hi-hat. Well now if we're going to open the hats in order to close them with the snare, then we can play an open note right before that, just like this. Sounds so cool, doesn't it? And if you're totally new to the drums and you've never done that, it's not that difficult. Yes, it takes practice to get consistent with it where it sounds great every time. Sounding great on the hi-hats, that is a process and not an event. Just be patient with it. But what you can practice doing is just going closed, open, closed, and closed, open, closed, where you're just working on timing that left foot. And so by moving the right hand from the ride to the hi-hat, you have to think a little bit more about left foot precision but it's not that difficult. Just a little bit of patience, a little bit of determination, and, you, and you'll be able to get there, and you'll find yourself playing different hi-hat sounds, which is so cool. And so that's something else that we gradually work in here. From there, we begin adding in some snare syncopation and playing grooves like this. Which is, not, again, not very difficult, even for a beginner, because all that we're doing, if you think about that, our right foot's locking up with our right hand, and our left hand is just offsetting our right hand. When we play this, look, I'm just playing right, left, right, left. That's all it is, don't overthink it, it's just singles. If you can sit here and play right, left, right, left, right, left, then you can play a groove with syncopated snare on the E's and the uhs. One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four. Not difficult. It's very cool what you'll find yourself doing when you realize, you know what, I can do this. This is not as complicated as I thought it was. I can figure this out. And when you go really slow, you listen to these recordings, practice along to the slow recordings, they're all 60 beats a minute, 
you'll get this locked in tight and feeling awesome. And then we can do the same thing with the kick where if you can go like this, just play singles between right hand and right foot, you'll get that right foot freed up where you can play As a matter of fact, there's not even anything in here that's quite that difficult. It's even simpler. A common groove that shows up in music is this. Like that, where we might throw in a kick on the uh of one, one, e, and uh, two. All it is is a kick note that falls halfway between these right hand eighth notes. Or on the uh of two, one, e, and uh, two, e, and uh. It's just right foot right so it's these simple building blocks that are just not complicated and that you're more capable of than you think and so from there we then get into some alternating 16th grooves which is really cool we get into busier kick snare patterns and then doing patterns like this and then using some of that left foot coordination we've built we're talking like day 20 something at this point we can then start adding in open notes So believe it or not, you'll be able to do that by the time you get to day, let's see, 20, day 28. That's the kind of stuff you're gonna be doing and it's not that difficult because your left foot is just playing quarter notes. That's all it is. Feet are playing quarter notes, right hand hitting the snare on two and four. And because you're opening right before you close, that throws in that open note there. And so these cool sounding grooves that you've heard before and you've always gone, wow, that's so cool. I wish I could play that. You can play it because it's just made of these simple building blocks that are not as complex as you think. So I hope you were encouraged. I hope you're inspired and motivated because I want you to go grab the guide now. Go download it. It's in the description. Yours totally free. This is going to be game changing because now you've got a path to follow to four way coordination. Even if you're a total beginner and even if you just got 20, 30 minutes a day to practice, that's all it takes, and you're gonna gradually move through this step by step, day by day. This literally will take you from stuck and plateauing with scatterbrained practice that's hit or miss. You're trying to solve little coordination problems as they hit you, and you're in a constant battle. Instead of fighting that constant uphill battle, you're gonna gain command and control and confidence over the kit so that you're able to play whatever you wanna play and no longer get stuck on difficult parts of songs. This is big. All right, so question for you as we're wrapping up. What have you been practicing in order to build coordination and what will you practice next? Specifically, what will you practice next in light of what you've learned today, in light of what I'm handing out to you today? This is a powerful resource that's gonna help you out a bunch, so I hope that's your next. But I'm always curious to know what you've been practicing. What are you working on to build coordination? So tell me that in the comments. Let's get a discussion going. So go grab that guide, totally free. Go print it out, put it on your iPad, whatever you wanna do, take it to your practice room. It is going to be a massive, help to you so that you're building coordination that makes everything easier so that you can play whatever you want to play. That's what I want for you. I hope that's what you want too. Thanks for watching as always. I hope this has been valuable to you. I hope this has been a helpful lesson. Know that you can do this. Know that you are capable of building four-way coordination even if you're a total beginner. Even if you just got 30 minutes a day, you can do this. So stay non-glamorous. Have a great rest of your day and a great week ahead. I'll see you on the next lesson.